All right, this is Simpson rule. And just like midpoint left and right use rectangles and trapezoidal obviously uses trapezoids, Simpson's rule uses parabolas. So we can figure this out mathematically, but we don't have the time. It is labor intensive. So what we're going to do is just look for the pattern so that you can remember the formula from the pattern. So what we're going to do is draw this. So we have eight sub intervals here. And we're going to label each of these points. So you can see that we're going from 0 to 7. I wanted to keep it a little different than this time to show you that it doesn't always have to be even. But we're going to go from 0 to 7. Our delta x still stays the same. So it's 7 take away 0 over 8. And so our width is 7 eighths. So our first point would be 7 eighths. And the next point would be add 7 eighths, so 14 eighths, so that would be 7 fourths, and then 7 plus 7, and so on. So what it's easier to do is this. We go to our calculator, and we input the function in. You can hit pause if you want to input that function. And then we go to our window, we go from 0 to 7, and then now we can put in our scalar, which was 7 eighths. So that'll give us our lines, and you'll get this picture here. So remember, when we graph this, we do zoom 0 to fit it, and then we're going to have to modify it, see how it hits here. We know that there's space here. So to figure that out, you just go to your window and see it's not at zero. Because again, it's under the curve. So we want full all the way to the x-axis. Now the x-axis is shown. You can see there is our picture through each of these. Now we go to our table set and one. And then we put in seven eighths. And we make our table start zero. That's where we're supposed to be. And then now when you go to your table, it'll give you your value. So 0, 8.75, 1.75. They're a little bit nicer than our 7, 8, 7 fourths. Now you can put in fractions if you want, but we're going to put in the decimals. Okay. So again, this is just an intro video. So we're going to take our time here now. So 0 0.875, 0, oops, 1 point. Because it's a whole point. It's a 0.875 that we're adding. 7.5. Uh, so 2.625 is a technology great, 3.5, 4.375. You'd have to sit there and keep adding 0.875 over and over and over again. If you have those old calculators that do it just by hitting it, then yeah, that would be quick. But all right, and then 6.125, and then you know it's perfect when we get 7. So now what's happening here is we're going to get this pattern of 1, 4, 1 for each of these. So this height right here is f of 0. This would be f of 0 0.875. And this is f of 1.75. Well, it works very similar. Think about it. This parabola right here, that f of 1.75 is going to be used for this parabola and for this parabola. So what we're really getting is this. There's 1 here, 4 here, and 1 here when we do a parabola. So we're going to get one of these, four of these, and one of these with our formula, which is delta x over 3. So that's where we're getting 1, 4. But wait, why is it a 2? Well, it's going to be used again. So you would get 4 of this one, f of 2.625. And then we get f of 3.5. But if you're going to use it 1, 4, 1, it would then be 1, 4, 1 again. So this would now become 2 because you used it twice. And then that's going to happen the same way here. You would get two of these because you would use it one for here for this parabola and then again for this parabola. So then we would get 4f. So you see the middle number is getting the 4 and the outer two numbers are getting 2. Except for the endpoints, just like before. So remember when we did the trapezoid, it was 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1. This one's 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1. So now we end up with 4, f of 6.125, and then finding that one point, which is only used once, f of 7. So we have a little sandwich of the a and the b, and everybody else is 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 1. And like I said, if you want to figure out why it's a 4 and a 1, 1, 4, 1, look at the math behind it. But this is what we're getting here. So we're getting 1, 4, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 4, 1. 1, 4, 1. And so you can see that middle number is added up together. So these two together are really 2. And then these two are going to give us 2. And these two are going to give us 2. So it's really that pattern of 1, 
comma four comma two comma four comma two comma four comma let's just actually write this one out one or how many fours one two three four one two three one more so you can see it's that nice clean pattern it's one four two four two four two four one but because this is used twice you have to have a two on it so you're going to use that function f for the first for this one and for that one so it looks like this here's a nice clean graph you can see it and zoom in those are the links that are on there and if you go to here well we can actually cycle through it so this is one four one but then when we go to one the next one you can see it's used again see so that one's going to have twice once for the first once for the second i think you guys get the idea and that one's going to use twice and then that one will use one there but by the time we get to the end it's been used twice so as we go through these you can see that those middle points right there are fours but those outer ones are going to be twice except for that one which only gets used once Okay, so now that we know the pattern, we just now need to use our formula. So it's different here. It's not delta x over 2. It's delta x over 3. And again, it's math behind it to create this formula. We just wanted the pattern from it. So there's our delta x over 3. So we're going to take our 7 eighths or our 0.875 and divide it by 3. And then we're going to go f of each of these. So it's going to be 1, 4, 2, 4, 1, 2. <laughs> Let's try that again. 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, Four, one all the way through so let's write this out so we have 0 0.875 over 3 and then we're starting at f of 0 there's one of those and then we get 4 of f of 0 0.875 so you can see all I'm doing is basically taking those points and we're gonna plug them in just like we've been doing for trapezoidal and midpoint and then now we're on to 2 of the 1.75 and then 4 of the 2.625 and then we end up with 3.5 so f of 3.5 and we again just check our numbers it's 1 4 2 4 2 but you can also look at it because it's on the outside so if you look at these as well the outer ones right except for the first of course and the last those are twos and the one in the middle is the four so the 0.875 should have a 4, 2.625 should have a 4, 1.75 should have a 2, 3.5 should have a 2. See? So it'll tell you what it is. And then we get 4 of the 4.375. And then 2, because it's this one, see? This is the ending point. So 3 points for each parabola, starting at the beginning. And then 2, f of 5.25. And then 4 for the f of 6.125 plus and then finally we end up with the f of seven and just like trapezoidal we have eight sub intervals and we have nine numbers so we know we're good now we just have to plug this in our calculator to figure out what the approximate area is and we do it just like trapezoidal so 0.875 divided by three again make sure your y is the correct function and then parentheses and then we're going to hit vars right and then y bars function y1 parentheses 0 plus and then we move on now to 4 and then 0 0.875 plus 2 1.75 plus and now 4 Where are we at? 1.75. Yeah, so we're on 2.625. We're good. 1.75. Yeah, okay. Plus, and then, so that was 4. Now we're on to 2. 2, and then ours. Uh, 4 is 4.375. It's probably a lot quicker at this than I am right now. You're probably done. Alright, and then 4. 
should have picked the smaller one, right? We could have been done. Need these for your homework. It's a good problem, though, because we have a, a non-nice answer. All right, let's run our last one. And then seven. Close it. Hit enter. And we get 120.128. Now, I would still go back up, and you can see it won't let you scroll. So if you hit enter, you can go back. And just hit, if you hit second, it'll allow you to go to left and right. Uh, just verify you plugged everything in. But it's good. We have a 120.128. So 120.128. One two eight four, and then again, when you're using this in your homework, you can go back to your Desmos graph, input the function, starting, finishing, number of intervals, and it'll tell you what the answer is, so you know it. Don't use this just to answer every single question, though. You're supposed to be practicing these for the exam, obviously. Um, but then there's the actual, so you can see that we overestimated this one, so our error here would actually be negative, right? So we'd have to take this and subtract a number to get back to one nineteen point. One nine. So these little over parts right here are actually more area than these under parts are. All right. But I hope that makes sense now with what Simpson's rule is. It's taking uh, two of your little sub intervals and using them together with those three endpoints to create a parabola and try to fill it in a little bit better with curves instead of lines. And so we get a, a nice estimate. It's just a lot more work. But we have those calculators to help us through the entire problem. So remember the pattern one four two four two four two four two four one.